Steroid in Binary Stars is sort of an expansion and a new indie game coming out this week. Steroid in originally came out in 2015 as this roguelike space shooter, but it was a bit limited in features and in content. Steroid in Binary Stars is an expansion for those of you that bought the original game on PS4, Xbox One, and PC, and a brand new game for those of you picking it up on Switch. We're skipping the story since there hardly is one here. You're a group of people in space that get attacked by space pirates and now you're on a mission to defeat them. It's a pretty straightforward story with very little depth. The gameplay is where the game really shines. Now, I started off this review by saying that it's a roguelike game and it sort of is to some extent. The general campaign is broken up into sections with a handful of select bosses for each level. The boss for each level gets randomly rotated with each playthrough. So while the levels aren't randomly generated, every playthrough feels slightly different as the bosses rotate with every playthrough you try. Ultimately, you can categorize this game as a minor roguelike arcade shoot-em-up. Jumping into the gameplay, you're given the option to choose your ship. You only have one from the start, but you can unlock up to five as you progress through the game. Each ship feels slightly different from each other and offer their own unique abilities. Your initial ship, for example, is lighter in weight and has a high-speed blaster, while the fortress ship is a much lower ship with heavy armor and a fire blaster. With your ship selected, you begin your playthrough, and that's where the arcade shoot em up aspects of the gameplay begin. You run through a stream of enemies that aren't solidified in stone, meaning that the wave of smaller enemies you fight in level 1 won't always be the same ones. You can essentially think that there is a different version of level 1 that gets rotated along with the different bosses assigned to level 1. The structure of these levels have you shooting down waves of smaller enemies before running into the main boss for that level. From the start, the only weapons you have are your ship's default tools. The first ship available to you, for example, has a blaster and a special ability melee weapon. As you shoot down waves of enemies, you'll see them drop weapons that you can then add on and swap with your ship. The weapons, much like the stages and bosses, are rotated throughout the game, so they're randomized with every playthrough. Though, these add-ons get increasingly more powerful the further down you are in the playthrough. Actually, an improvement from this add-on version of the game is that the weapons now have a brief description for each of them, giving the player a bit more information on what they're going to do when you use them. Still, that sense of experimentation with the weapons is there as you drop your old add-ons for the new ones you pick up. The risk and reward only gets greater the further you are into the game as you begin to get modifiers that, for example, double your damage but also half your health. Now while the gameplay is pretty short in the sense that the whole campaign is only a few levels, the brutal difficulty of the gameplay tends to make you have to constantly replay the campaign from the start. Like I said, it's a very arcade-like game about reaching your high score and surviving. Once you die, you get sent back to the beginning of the game with a new rotation of levels and enemies. Practice does make perfect though, and over time, you'll find the challenge will start to wear down a bit as you improve your skills. The main single player mode also features a co-op mode that can be played with a friend, although it's definitely increasing the difficulty of the enemies. Additionally, you and your newfound teammate share a health gauge, so it is balanced out to be fair and not just the easy way out of the campaign. I ended up playing a lot of this game with my roommate, which despite yelling a bunch throughout the game, had a great time. Outside of the co-op and single player are score-based features like a daily run that lets you upload your daily high scores to compete with other people around the world. There's also an unlockable boss rush mode that ditches the whole waves of smaller enemies and focuses on bosses only. There's not much to do outside of this, and if you look at the size of how long the playthroughs are if you just look at the level content, it may seem like a bit of a drought of content. I can definitely see that point of view, and if you're not the gamer that enjoys repeat runs of missions over and over again until you beat it, something like Cuphead for example, then this may not be the game for you. Now I played and reviewed a ton of shoot 'em up games here on this channel before that offer a decent amount of gameplay but then drop the ball in terms of the art and visuals. Steradin doesn't lack in the visuals department though. The entire game is rendered in this pixel art style, but it's in a high enough bit where you can actually make out some of the details of the ship. The backdrops for stages are great looking, even too great sometimes. There were times where the backgrounds could get a bit too flashy and so they distract me during the gameplay. The worst parts were when the backdrops would be the same color as enemy fire. When you're quickly looking at the bullets coming your way, it's hard to not mesh the enemy fire with the background if they're the same color. Playing the Switch build for review, I did notice a few times where the frame rate would dip. It didn't specifically seem like it was the heavy enemy fire scenes though. It seemed a bit random when I first experienced it. Regardless, it's something I wanted to note since this is a game that requires such precise dodges. A mixed frame rate can ultimately ruin that experience. With that said, it only really occurred twice to me while playing the game, so it didn't become a grand issue as if it was a prominent issue.
I mostly enjoyed the music and sound design that this game had to offer. The main menu theme felt a bit uninspiring, like something you'd find in a royalty-free song bank. Nothing too special. The heavy rock tracks, on the other hand, during gameplay were fantastic. They completely got the adrenaline pumping and ready for that chaotic fun that the gameplay brought. Each blast had a different sound effect tied to them that felt distinct from the other types of weapons. Specifically, playing on the Switch, the HD rumble was pretty great at times, but it also glitched out on occasion. Things like getting your ship hit activated a nice feeling rumble feedback. One of my favorite instances of the feature is actually in the main menu when the game boots up. There's this nice little rumble that plays as the game fades into view. However, there are some bugs with the HD rumble. There were times in the gameplay where my controller would vibrate to the max and continuously for a few seconds when there wasn't anything to react to on screen. The implementation of the rumble is nice when it works, but it still has some bugs to iron out. Stared in Binary Stars is a very entertaining game that will have you screaming as you constantly die telling yourself just one more try. It's one of those games that you play for a few hours only to realize you've actually been playing the game all day. With that said, there are some bugs with the framerate and HD rumble occasionally. Visuals are quite nice, but they can also get so flashy that they end up being a distraction for the gameplay, and the short playthrough time may be a turnoff for those of you that aren't into the idea of playing a game over and over again. If you're into the arcade-like gameplay, I feel like you enjoyed this game quite a bit, but for those of you that aren't so much into that gameplay style, yet have a bit of interest, I'd say just wait for a sale on this one. Steroid in Binary Stars launches on March 8th, I think first on the Nintendo Switch and then coming later I think as an update to other platforms, but it'll currently retail for $12.99 at least at the time of this review. That does it for my review of Steroid in Binary Stars for the Nintendo Switch, PS4, Xbox One, and PC. If you have any questions about the game or future review requests, please leave them in the comments down below. You can also reach me over on Twitter, Instagram, or my Discord, which are all linked in the description. Definitely recommend you check those out. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.